there's a song called there's five o'clock somewhere by a uh, country singer <laughs> we're live now chair good evening everyone and uh welcome to our committee of adjustment meeting for tuesday february 8th 2022 uh we're getting closer to spring uh there was a published agenda on our website and uh just before we get started, we have our members, all our members here this evening, and we have member Allwit, member Allen, member Martin, and member Clark, and I'm member McQueen, and I will be chairing this evening's meeting. We also have uh, for tonight uh, our, our deputy secretary treasurer, uh, uh, Clark uh, Lovett, and then also we have director Benner, our planner, and uh, uh, planner uh, Rob Key will also be with us this evening. So good evening, everyone, and good evening to all of the uh, viewing public and our uh, people that are, are going to be on with regards to the two files that we have on our agenda. So moving along to our published agenda, um, uh, to the members here uh, today, this evening, do we have any, anybody have a declaration of pecuniary interest? Okay, all right, one does arise, you can raise it at that time. So we, uh, item three, we have the approval of the minutes for uh, January 11th, uh, 2022. And uh, would somebody care to move and second those minutes? Moved by uh, Member Allwood and Member Allen. Are there any um, errors or omissions or any uh, items to be discussed uh, from those uh, minutes? Okay, seeing none, uh, all in favor of those minutes. Yeah, those are carried. We're moving on then to uh, deferred files. There are no deferred files. And we have two new files this evening. And uh, the first one is AO3 2022 Gallant. And I will read the uh, regulations uh, for the public meeting portion. My glasses here. <clears throat> This public meeting was called under section 45 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 as amended with respect to an application for a minor variance file A03-2022, affecting land zoned by Sherry Ann Glant, described as being legal description, lot 51 RCP 840 Artemisia, Gray Highlands, civic address 243 Point Road. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard mail on the 10th day of January, 2022 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. In addition to all agencies and persons identified in the planning act. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Gray Highlands before the minor variance is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the municipality uh, of the Municipality of Gray Highlands to the Ontario Lands Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Municipality of Gray Highlands before the minor variance is passed, the person or public body may, be, may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless, in the opinion of the Tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. It is important to note that if you wish to be mailed a copy of the notice of decision and you do not live within 120 meters of the subject property, you must provide your request in writing to the planning department of the municipality of Gray Highlands. The electronic registration does not represent your written request. Staff can, uh, can provide direction to you in applying uh, in writing for a request for notice. At this time, the municipal planner will explain the purpose and the effect of the proposed minor variance, read the planning report and advise of any comments received. Thank you. The subject property is located on the east side of Point Road on the shore of Lake Eugenia. The lot is approximately 1800 square meters and contains an existing cottage that is in rough condition. The owner desires to either renovate and extend or rebuild the structure. The existing structure is set back 10.8 meters from the rear lot line. The houses on the properties to the north and south are both set back zero meters from the rear law line or near zero and appear to slightly encroach onto OPG property. The zero meter setback is a consistent pattern amongst the four houses to both the north and south of the subject property. The result is that the subject cottage does not currently match the established building line along the lakefront. 
the owner's desire to rebuild or extend the cottage along this established building line by having the new or extended cottage be located zero meters from the rear lot line. The minimum rear yard setback in the residential shoreline zone is 30 meters measured from the average high water mark or nine meters from the rear property line, whichever is greater. In this area of Lake Eugenia, the rear property lines are located more than 30 meters from the high water mark in order to replace the cottage or to extend the existing cottage to a point that is zero meters from the rear lot line, relief is required from that nine meter setback. The purpose and effect then, uh, the proposed variant seeks relief from section 7.4.2D of the zoning bylaw, uh, requiring the 30 meter setback from the high water mark and the nine meter from the rear property line, whichever is greater. The requested variance will grant the following relief. The existing dwelling may be extended or replaced with the following minimum rear yard setback, zero meters at the southeast corner of the dwelling, nine meters at the northeast corner of the dwelling, the nine meter setback shall be measured in a direction that is parallel to the northern interior side yard lot line. The remaining standard setback, height and lot coverage provisions of the residential shoreline zone shall apply. In order to grant a minor variance, the variance must meet the four tests that are required. Is it remaining the general intent and purpose of the official plan? Is it maintaining the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? Is the request minor in nature? And is the request desirable for the appropriate development or use of the land building or structure? In the analysis of the report, I've laid out that I believe it meets these four tests and maintains the 30 meter High watermark setback set by the official plan and zoning bylaw. The nine meter additional setback by the zoning bylaw would theoretically establish a, a, a building line uh, if everything was new. However, everything already exists and this, this cottage is set back from that alternative intent. So granting relief from it, I don't think violates that intent. Uh, the request is pertaining to a setback, not a use. It still maintains that 30 meter more important setback. And I believe it's desirable and that it'll match the existing building line of, of what's already established in the general neighborhood. In terms of comments received, uh, county planning notes that the property appears to be fully outside the map hazard lands. That said, staff would kindly defer to the conservation authority staff to determine the minimum appropriate setback from Lake Eugenia from a safety perspective. Uh, provided positive comments are received from the Conservation Authority and sufficient space is available for the installation of the proposed new septic system. County staff have no further concerns. Gray Sobel Conservation Authority provided a long version of their comments. The summary is based on our review of the application. Gray Sobel has no objection in principle to the approval of the minor variance to reduce the rear yard setback to zero meters, provided the 30 meter setback from Lake Eugenia is maintained. A grading and drainage plan should be provided at the building permit stage demonstrating the legal property boundary locations in relation to the lake and proposed development, including any fill placement or site grading. The permit may be required from our office for any development and site alteration within the regulated area. Gray Highlands Transportation advise any alterations to the entrance will require a permit from their department. Gray Highlands Building Services advise that a building permit will be required for the development and must conform to the Ontario Building Code, uh, including all applicable law in place at the time of permit submission and public utilities and emergency services had no concerns. Bill and Linda DeLille, the neighbors at 235 Point Road, which is three lots to the north, uh, wrote in stating they have no issues with the application and are in support of the variance. Kathleen Hogan and Dominic Mockery, neighbors at 239 Point Road, two lots north of the subject property, wrote in and noted they have no issues with this, this application and support the variance. We are looking forward to seeing the future development of the property. Staff are recommending that the application be approved as it meets those four tests. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Planner Rapti. Um, any uh, questions from the uh, committee members? Uh, go ahead, uh, Member Martin and then Member Allen. You don't seem to be coming, can't hear you. Not yet, no. How about now? Yeah. 
<laughs> no. Okay. Go ahead. Um, there's a little button on the, the thing that I keep forgetting about. Anyways, um, Matt, you, you said something about an encroachment right now as it exists to the OPG lands. Is that going to be a concern? I guess if they were circulated and they provided no comment to the encroachment, I guess that would satisfy it. But if they weren't, how do we give them an opportunity to rectify that encroachment as well? I think if we're if we're granting a minor variance, we may as well clear up everything at once. Okay. Plan the, the encroachment is on a neighboring property, actually. I, it was uh, those lots, most of those buildings are so close to the lot line. Some of them are touching it and some of them even have some decks that extend over. The subject property for which the variance is requested, it's the only one that's way far back and they are requesting to meet it. And in order to meet it, they'll they'll have to have a survey, especially if they're going right to the granted relief of zero, they'd need a surveyor to confirm that it's there and, and not encroaching at that building permit stage. But any encroachments aren't on this property right now. Okay, then that leads me to my second question. That last map that um, uh, Deputy Clerk Levitt just put up, that line is not the encroachment line then? Uh, sorry, the one before that? The topographical one. one? Yeah, yeah this one. So this, um, so that's not the encroachment line? This That's not the OPG? Here. This one is a survey of the existing state of the existing cottage, just to demonstrate how far everything is right now. That diagonal black line that's just to the left of those trees that are drawn on there, that's the property line. And then the 10.829 or something like that setback is how far it is from the OPG property currently, which is the rear yard. So you're saying that this black line is the OPG, delineates the OPG lands where they start. Correct. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your questions. And um, member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This request for a zero setback, did it come from the property owners right at the outset? Did, was this a, a, a request from them? I've been talking to the property owners for a while now. They've just have general uh, questions about how they could redevelop the property with the cottage not being in great condition. Uh, looking forward as and wanting to match kind of what's there. And in talking with me, I said this would probably be okay a zero meter setback in this scenario, given the proximity of everything else in the neighborhood, and that it's still going to meet the thirty meter setback. So through consultation with myself, uh, we went with the zero meter request. And then the nine meter setback on the north end was to orient it properly too. So even if they're getting zero at the bottom corner, it's gonna be oriented nicely to the lake. Okay, this, when I did the site visit, of course, I those are pretty deep lots. I, you know, It's hard to see the condition of the other cottages, but it looks like some of them are perhaps old and, and small and may be replaced at some time in the future. So it's, you know, the, obviously right now that I'm on Gray County maps right now and they're where the lot, um, the lots have a diagonal front lot line. Um, it's some of those perhaps could be corrected in the future, but if, if we're moving them right out to a zero setback, then it, it, it kind of, sets up the rest for a zero setback also. I know a rear yard setback is, is I would think to, to protect neighbors so that you don't have two houses back to back that are right close to the lot lines. Um, and in this case, there isn't one, but I, I'm, I'm just wondering why it's been decided or, or suggested that we go to a zero setback as opposed to, to even one meter or two meters just to, to, to make sure that it isn't encroaching on OPG lands. Uh, Anurakhi, any thoughts to that? Or? The request from the applicant was a, was a zero. That's kind of, they wanted to go as close as is feasible. Um, so that's what they went with. Um, 
with the other ones to speak to those there's actually case law that was recently settled i think it was 2020 it was presented at the last committee of adjustments conference we can't actually even if we have these setback requirements when someone goes to rebuild they have as of right permission to build where the current cottage is without any variance or anything you can't re-establish that line further back so as far as re-establishing further it's kind of it's kind of done they already all have legal not other than ones that are encroaching too far over those ones would have to be shimmied back to be fully on their property but even with the zero meter setback by granting relief through the variance at when at the building permit stage when someone goes to apply for something with a zero meter setback the building inspector is going to have to get a surveyor certificate and a scenario with a zero meter setback to ensure that the zoning is, is being complied with when things are so tight and to ensure that building codes being complied with um, and theoretically they might not even end up going right to the zero just with the way your foundation pours or anything like that but um, mm -hmm. that's kind of the explanation there um Or, uh, member Allen, Al, you have further? Yeah, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm thinking about the the lot line there to to build that cottage to a zero setback. The excavation is going to have to be, you know, six, eight, ten feet onto OVG, OPG property, and you know, is by us giving that permission does that allow somebody to go in and dig up OPG land? That, that's my biggest concern here is that we're, you know, we all know that you, you can't dig right to the lot line if that's where you're building to. I interrupt you, any thoughts? Or I'm just looking at comments from OPG, go ahead. Yeah, so my response to that uh, OPG actually does allow people to do a lot of stuff on their property here, They're like OPG's actual area, fire pits, things like that. They have permitting process for works in their area. By granting a variance, we, we can't grant permission to trespass effectively. So they even by, we're just granting the permission for the building to exist there. They would still need to go through OPG and their permitting process and get the permission to temporarily be on those lands in order to not be be trespassing effectively uh and the building permit process handles some stuff like that too okay thank you yeah that, that that sounds a little bit more clear okay thanks uh member allen uh, member alwyn thank you mr chair just a question for the planner i mean the uh council or member allen mentioned uh the excavations and footings but the footings would actually have to be within the legal boundary of their lot right i mean they couldn't so that the actual walls of the building may be back further than the footing could be right up to the lot line, but uh, it couldn't be on OPG property, could it? That would be an encroachment. Well, that's the importance of having a survey too, right? Yeah, yeah. Make so sure that would be a required there. building permit process, I would, I would think. Under the building code, you can't... When you get a permit issued, the permit pertains to your property. So as soon as any of your stuff is spilling onto somewhere else, you're you're breaking the law. So that's where that stuff's handled. There has been cases where somebody's built on the wrong lot. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So yeah, there's checks and balances that are in place, and, and certain that survey survey is, is certainly uh, you know I'm I'm referring to things in the past, not things in the future. So. All right, any other comments uh, with regards to this file from committee members before I move on? Okay, thank you for that. Um, at this time, the committee will hear any presentation by the applicant or their agent. Is there somebody here at this meeting wishing to speak to this file? So we have, oh, we have someone with their hands hand up here, Lawrence Breakwell, and I'll just uh, move them over. Okay. And I'll just note, Member Martin is still with us. Her camera was just off, and she's back oh. anyhow. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, Lawrence. Good evening. Unmute. There you go. Start video. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I am not used to this. The last 20 minutes have been very stressful trying to figure out how to participate in it. Um, 
I'm Larry Breakwell. My wife, Sherry Gallant, is <laughs> the owner of, uh, of that property. And uh, um, first of all, let me say uh, to, to everybody, thank you. Um, Matt has been awesome. Uh, he is, in the last year that we've been dealing with him, he really is a very, very smart guy. He's learned a lot, scaled everything down to, to what has to happen. Really, really happy with him. You guys need to make sure you don't lose him. <laughs> he is a, he's, I've dealt with planners before and uh, he is, he is uh, top along. Uh, I also want to thank Elaine Phillips for uh, helping to, to get everything set up and me to get the signs and all that during winter storms. Um, now, just to, to comment on a couple of things of why, why shift the building towards the lake. Um, first of all, uh, the, any building, if we did rebuild it, would not be right up against the property line because you've got to take into account uh, overhangs, but also the, a deck. So you're still shifting further back, but it gives us options to move it further towards the lake and open up the space behind it to put a new septic system. So the existing septic system at this cottage, so if we kept the, 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 the current concrete and rebuilt on top, the existing septic is on the lake side. Um, if we wanted to make a bigger house, which would require a larger tank and a larger field, my understanding is there's not enough room on that side without encroaching on OPG. We'd have to move it to the back side or to the front side, the road side. Road side. <laughs> um, so by allowing the concrete to shift forward with a deck, we would have more room on the front side to have the, the septic, the new septic system plus a well. This property doesn't have an existing well. So we have to take that into account if we're going to do any of the, those kinds of things. Um, as you uh, remember, Alan probably saw that the house is in very bad condition. It rains inside. Uh, it's, uh, I just had the, the hydro cut to it. It's just, but the, by allowing the, um, the setback, uh, the, the motion, it allows us to slide forward towards the lake similar to what other people have already on the lake, not going on to OPG land for, for anything of the structure, uh, still gives us room to put up a nice deck, but then bigger room on the other side in order to put a new septic system and then a well that's sufficiently far away to, to mitigate any of those problems. I'm hoping that answers some of the concerns. And certainly putting the septic out further away from the lake will make everybody happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add or? No, thank you. I will see if there's any questions from committee members. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions uh, to the owners of the property? Oh, oh, go ahead, Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's, it's not a question, it's, it's a comment. I would, I would really prefer to see, a, say, a one meter setback on that that um, I guess it's the southeast corner, um, which isn't going to probably affect septic and, and well, but I'm, I'm, if the rest of the committee are okay with zero, then I'm, I'm not gonna oppose it. But I, I think just even for your own protection that a, a one meter setback gives you a little bit of, you know, if that guy pouring the footing is out six inches that you haven't now um, gone into uh, an encroachment um, position. So, but again, meter a meter would be ideal, but um, I'm not going to oppose a zero. Thank you. Any comments to that, Lawrence, or? Well, again, I, I would prefer the zero uh, because when I'm thinking of, of long-term, it's the deck. Um, this particular property cuts, it cuts back. If you look at point, the point, yeah. we're on the, the, where it's cutting back now. So I, I would prefer to be able to put a cottage plus the deck as close as I could 
to like for from a view standpoint. Um, and I'm not, I wouldn't be interfering with any of the properties on either side from a from their view, but it gives me more options on the the, the road side. So it gives it it's a balance because I'm not again, I'm not putting the concrete right up to that corner. It's when you put, if you think of the the deck, a deck envelope, it, it gives me as close as I can to the rear property line. If I go back, then I, I would, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it properly, but I would prefer to have the zero um, to give me as much room on the other side, it, it, the balance between both yeah. sides. You're trying to you're trying to maximize as much space between the road and your new property is what you're trying. Yeah. Or new house is sort of what you're trying to yeah. establish. Councillor Allen, you have a further comment, and then I'll go to uh, Member Martin. Sorry, Member yeah. Allen. Sorry. Thank you. So the the proposed says proposed potential envelope. So is that going to be on the southeast? corner where it's touching the lot line you're saying that that will actually be the corner of the deck as opposed to the corner of the house mm -hmm. okay all right that changes everything thank you yeah. sorry <laughs> yeah and and having having a cottage on the lake you definitely want a, a full deck <laughs> right that's uh okay um member martin you had a comment or a question I was just going to say it changes things and it doesn't because if you're even if you're putting a deck there, you can't even walk around that if it's a zero meter. I mean, one meter setback is, is three feet. I think something is better than nothing, but I, I understand the point of it. But um, sorry, Matt just came on. So yeah, and I'm going to suggest probably he's got some explanation that that 30 meter setback is still usable, but go ahead, plan a rep key. With the walking part, I'm, I'm assuming you're thinking without kind of going on to OPG's property, um, everyone kind of trespasses, you know, on, on the lake anyway with the lakefront lot, right? It's kind of like yep. how OPG lets people have campfires and kind of use it like their own property. You just can't exclude others from it. So from that point, OPG doesn't care. And is how everyone kind of operates on on the lake generally um it's mostly just the legality of the structure to be concerned with and again building code doesn't let you the building permit process will have to have a permit or sorry a survey when things are this tight um so that should all be checked off all those boxes provided all those steps are, are followed the way they should be okay thank you for that uh I'm, I'm not, uh member martin which I suppose is okay for this applicant and this owner, but what if the next owner wants to put up a fence? Now we've precluded him from being able to even put up a fence because there's no room there. There's a lot of uh, infrastructure that's in that 30 meters of, from around Lake. I know we have dealt with the, the conservation. I get it. I get it, but it, it's not. still it's still a that doesn't. I understand it, and I, I understand OPG's position on it, but that still doesn't make it right. So I'm just trying to um, I guess, you know, see it from another point of view, I suppose, is what I'm trying to do. You're trying to protect the individual if there's an issue, I understand in that part. Um, but going to you, Matt, um, yeah, there's different, like, your, I've it, blocks and walkways and docks and and stuff so Matt, you mentioned that there's a permitting process through opg to to to, to that plus it would involve the conservation authority because you're within that uh, 30 meter uh setback from the from the uh, lake itself right so there's a process i've never personally experienced it i have i obviously get a lot of people who want to develop on the lake speaking to me and then post these processes or even in parallel they tell me about how they're already working with OPG to get a permit for whatever it is, the other thing that they're doing uh, within the shoreline that doesn't involve a structure. Uh, Larry might actually be able to speak to it. I believe he was uh, one of the individuals who had, had told me about uh, kind of armor stoning or something along the lakefront and, and had been speaking to OPG about a permitting process. Right. So um, everybody has to sign a license 
to use the land. Uh, once you have the license, you can walk on the land and, and, and cut the grass and all that. Um, the, the, the process with OPG for doing any shoreline development or anything on their land, they're, they're fine with a lot of stuff. They use Gray Sabo Conservation Authority to ensure that you don't do anything that will affect the quality of the lake. For example, you're not supposed to put sand in. Uh, you're not supposed to encroach further into the water from the existing shoreline. Um, make sure the grading, you know, uh, you're not, if you're changing any grading, they want to know what you're doing so that it's again, not going to change anything that's going to affect the lake uh, and the quality of the water in the lake. So uh, for example, as uh, member Allen probably saw is I already have the armor stone bought so that uh, I'm, I'm working through the, the OPG requirements to allow me to, to, to fix up the, the shoreline and make it nicer and level so you can actually cut the grass rather than the, uh, the tons of weeds that are currently there because the previous owners did nothing to take care of that property for 20, 25 years. Um, and if you, I'm sure if you look back, you'll see that the number of times the city or the town has had to come and cut the grass and dealt with complaints about it not being taken care of from the moment we got it in the summer we have been doing our best to clean it up make it presentable so that when people walk by they're not shaking their heads going please do something with this um but o opg is uh I, I dealt with them before um and they're very very straightforward on what what you're allowed to do if you had a boathouse you can keep it fixed if you've got a marine railway you can keep that you want to put a dock in pipe docks not cribs if you want to uh, uh do the shoreline armor stone or whatever but materials that you use we want to know we want to know all that and you're good to go you need to fill on our land that's fine but tell us what you want to do and make sure you do it but if you don't ask and you don't pay your fees and you, and you go ahead and do it, they have the right to come and tell you to rip that stuff out. And I believe there have been a couple of occurrences where people have put stuff or done armor stone and just ignored the fact that it's OPG's land and they came and told them, yank it out. So no, I, we're following the rules. I've been dealing with um, Gray Sabo Conservation and OPG for uh, not as long as Matt, but uh, or dealing with Matt, but uh, for several months now since we got the property to try and again, make it as nice as possible for everybody and, and useful. I see on the, uh, so, oh, sorry, um, member Martin, did you have anything further before I go to anybody else? No, I think that was member Allen's comment anyways, but no. Oh yeah, that's right. So, so looking to the property to the North, North, it looks like a, like a patio or like a, a, a square block area. It looks like a fire pit. And mm -hmm. uh, um, you can't really see it from the road, but you can see it from the picture here. And that looks like something that's somebody... Okay, so there's an example uh, of that as well. And I'm sure they'll be really happy to have you move that septic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, any last comments from committee members? <clears throat> so Lawrence, to stay on there. I gotta, I gotta go to the public now. If there's any questions from the public, so just uh, stay on there, please. You and your wife. Um, uh, any person present uh, wishing to object, support, or have general questions for the proposed minor variance, please indicate and state your name and address. So, um, Jerry Lynn, do we have anybody wishing to speak? Okay, we'll just give them a minute. We did. We do have two in attendance that did register for this file. So, Bill or Suzanne, if you'd like to speak, um, if you could raise your hand using the raise hand feature. Just give them a minute. Maybe they just like to be in attendance and not speak. So no pressure, but. <laughs> Even if you have a general question. I'm not seeing any hands. Okay. All right then, so obviously uh, no questions or comments there. Any further discussion on the proposed application from committee members? And uh, 
Matt, do you have any last comments from the questions or points that were raised? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, uh, committee. And uh, from this point then, uh, so this is an application for a uh, minor variance. And uh, since there's no other questions, I will put this to a vote. So your position on this application for a minor variance, uh, Member Allwood. Member Allwood. He looks to have frozen. He's pretty still, isn't he? Oh, there he is. There you go. Member Allwood, uh, your position on this application. Sorry, yeah, uh, I wasn't sure who froze there. Somebody froze, but uh, I support the application, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, Member Allen. I also support the minor variance. Okay, uh, Member Clark. Yes, I support the minor variance. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Martin. I will support the minor variance. Okay. And uh, Member McQueen, I also support the minor variance uh, subject to a 20 day appeal period. If there are no appeals during that uh, time, you may then proceed with uh, your uh, next steps. So have a good evening and, uh, and that has been carried. So, and, I'm, and thanks for the kind words for, for Matt. I will. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, you, you got them smiling, so there you go. <laughs> All Just, right, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, moving back to uh, our next file is uh, B02 2022. I'll read out the regulations for this file. So this public meeting uh, was called under 16, section 53 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 as amended with respect to an application for a consent file B02 2022, affecting lands owned by Aldo uh, Marcinko and Jean Marcinko uh, described, I'm saying that right, Marce, Marcio, 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 sorry, described as being legal description, part lot 22, concession seven, Euphrasia Park one, one six R three six four six, Bray Highlands, civic address is seven two five eight oh seven. The notice of this public meeting was mailed by standard class mail on the 10th day of January, 2022 to the property owner and to all property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. In addition to all agencies and persons identified in the planning act, if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions uh, to the municipality of Greyhounds before the consent is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the municipality of Greyhounds to the Ontario Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the municipality of Greyhounds before the consent is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. At this time, the municipal planner will explain the purpose and the effect of the proposed consent, read the planning report and advise of any comments received. Planner Rocky. Thank you. The subject property is a farm holding that is approximately 31 hectares and is situated in the northwest corner of Rockland. The eastern half of the property falls within the Rockland settlement area boundary, while the western and northern portions are agricultural wetland and hazard areas. The property contains a dwelling and farm buildings. The dwelling was used as the Rockland Academy in the past, and as a result, the property possesses site-specific residential zoning to permit a private school. Property has roughly 147 meters of frontage on 7th line and 414 meters of frontage on side road 22B. The subject property has several related consent applications from October, November, that time last year, 2021. Applications B24, 2021, B25, 2021, and B26, 2021 requested consent to sever three individual lots from the subject property. Upon review of the applications, it was discovered that a municipal drain traversed the subject lands in the proposed locations of the lots related to applications B24 and B26. Those two applications were subsequently withdrawn. Application B25 was approved. 
The current proposal is to sever effectively the entirety of the portion of the subject lands that falls within the Rockland settlement area boundary, less the area that will be conveyed through B25. This separates the developable portion of the subject property from the agricultural lands to the west. Any application for future development on the severed lot can then be considered separately from the retained agricultural lands. The proposal also involves rezoning the severed lands to apply a holding provision that prevents any development until a comprehensively planned proposal is approved through a subsequent zoning amendment and possibly an associated plan of subdivision. The future development would then address the reconstructing or shifting of the municipal drain that would likely be required to accommodate the development. The purpose and effect then, to simplify that, is to sever a 7.6 hectare parcel from the subject lands with a lot frontage of 98.2 meters. The retained parcel will have a lot area of 23.1 hectares and a lot frontage of 308 meters onto side road 22B. In terms of comments received, Gray County Planning commented that the county would recommend that positive comments are received from Gray Solvable Conservation Authority on the subject application. The county would further recommend that any further development of the severed portion be considered in a fulsome manner without unduly biasing the potential future development of the site. Gray Sobel, a summary of their comments is that they generally have no objection to the proposed consent. There's a long version of their comments appended to the report. Gray Highlands Transportation advised that an entrance permit is required to obtain access to the severed parcel. And Gray Highlands Building, Environmental Services, Emergency Services, and uh, CLS commented with no concerns. Bell Canada commented they have no concerns. Uh, and to conclude, planning staff are recommended that the, the consent be approved subject to the noted conditions which are payment of any outstanding municipal taxes, payment of the $500 parkland dedication fee, the applicant obtain a zoning bylaw amendment to implement the consent, and the applicant obtain an entrance permit for the severed lot. Uh, the agent did contact me ahead of the meeting here to request that that not be a condition for the, the entrance permit. I'll let her speak to that. Uh, and then I'm sure committee will have some, some questions on that later. And just before you leave the map, just to, or the map on the screen, I have a quick question to you. And it just looks like, and I'm sure the agent will speak to that, but the current map that's on the screen right now shows the hazard. And basically it looks like the severance is sort of following the edge of the hazard lands. That's correct. The, the, that's an interesting point. The hazards, I don't, I don't know if you count it in the settlement area or out, but it, it's not developable anyway. So it's going to stick yes. with the retained land. And then it's just the settlement area designation that's going. Right. And uh, the only question I have there, would that be better to be squared off as green space in a, um, a settlement area um, then? And that's, we can get into that conversation as we, as we move through with the agent. That's, that's for sure. Um, okay. Thank you for that. And uh, great, great uh, explanation there. And do we have any uh, comments, questions from our committee members before we move on? Because we do have, uh, we do have uh, the representative of the um, application uh, that could speak to the report that has been pre being presented. So if you wish to wait at that time. Okay. All right, moving on then. At this time, the committee will hear any presentation by the applicant or their agent. So for the record, is there somebody uh, representing this application? We have Kristen Rennie in attendance okay. with their hand up. So I'm just gonna move her over. Good, after or good afternoon or late evening, I guess we could call it. Ms. Rainey, are you uh, now you're? I'm here now. I got. I thought I got kicked out. <laughs> oh, well, you're in now. So good afternoon. I'm here. Yeah, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have a presentation. If um, Deputy Clerk could pull it up, it, Matt did cover most of the stuff that I was going to speak to. So if we you could just go to slide um, 
seven or uh, six, that'd be great. So this is the same um, plan that uh, Planner Rapke had mentioned showing the severed and the retained lands. So the severed lands equal about 7.6 hectares with a lot frontage of uh, 98.2 meters um, along the side road 22B. And then the retained parcel, which is outside of the settlement area would be 23.1 hectares with a lot frontage of 308. Um, you mentioned the history of the property that we've been here before and um, we are in the process and have applied for a zoning bylaw amendment to um, address um, a setback on the one lot that we created through the other consent uh, in October. I think October, November, we came back because of the drainage systems that we had uh, um, figured out. And so that zoning um, application would essentially, as Matt said, put a hold on the severed lands so that the lands would be reviewed from a comprehensive perspective and that nobody could come and build like a ginormous house in the middle of those lands and sort of, you know, um, eliminate the possibility for a more um, comprehensive uh, development on the property. So um, that's in the process as well. You'll, you'll see me again in the future. Um, I also wanted to mention, uh, if you could go to the last uh, slide, which is the, we use this to articulate um, that the possibility for the property when we were trying to do those first three consents. So I just wanted to bring this up again. We haven't adjusted it based on uh, the previous approval, but um, I just wanted to show, because you had a, a question related to keeping the the hazard lands outside of the, the severed parcel. And so I just wanted to show that this would be a, a, a potential lot um, layout that would, I think be easier to keep the hazard lands off of um, a future land. We, it's really hard to manage, but if you know where your property line is and it isn't part of the hazard, then maybe it's easier to keep them out of it and encroaching within that area. Um, the lots need to be larger lots in Rockland because they'll be on um, private services. So um, anyway, that was just, I just wanted to point that out in terms of why and how we, we chose sort of the configuration of the, um, of the severed lots. Um, what else was I going to mention? Matt did a really good job uh, sort of doing the overview. Um, I did want to speak quickly to uh, the consent conditions. And with the first application for consent, we did have the same um, requirement for an entrance permit, which made sense because we had to prove that there was one available for the lot um, so that they, we could clear the condition to create that lot. This property will be reviewed from a comprehensive review through a plan of subdivision or condominium. And so um, the, the entrance would be part of that process. Um, and so for my client to go to the town to ask for, look, we could maybe put an entrance here, but it's probably not going to be there is a little bit of time. And it, it does actually cost them money to go through that process for them to say, um, there is one available. I think based on the size of the property and the um, the ability to adjust the sight lines in the settlement area that there would be um, an entrance permit that would be available in the future when we figure out what it's going to look like and what the layout is going to be. So that's just one request that I have um, in regards to the approval. So just for clarity, clarity on that, uh, Ms. Rainey, is basically if you're developing into a uh, into a street, you're going to have to go through that process to get access uh, actually on two spots, right? Correct, yes. Right. Yep. So, and I guess to, to Matt, is that something that could be uh, captured? And as you said, it's, got a, it's going to go through the zoning that have a holding provision on it anyway, so you can't build anything to go through that. So then there's going to be roughly no need for an entrance until you develop it anyway. Is that how you see that, Matt? Or? Having been there on the side road 22B side, I see no possible way an entrance permit can't be issued any, like this is usually done um, as a means of getting transportation to confirm there won't be an issue. I've been to this one. I know it's pretty much pancake flat and there's not going to be an issue. And I, I'm doubting someone could technically apply for an entrance to drive onto the property while they're, you know, planning the subdivision ahead of a road approval. And I don't see it being an issue. This is more done when we sever the lot. Transportation hasn't done the check. 
um, and you don't want to go and convey that and then someone buys it and they show up for an entrance permit and they can't even get in their property without conflicting with the policy, right? I don't think that scenario is happening here. So I'm, I am in agreement with Kristen here. I don't think it's necessary in this scenario. Transportation does uh, generally just provide that comment all the time because that's what they've kind of been instructed to do for their check, right? So just to follow up on that, if the if, if this severance is created, I think it was seven point whatever the land is, and say it's not developed for a period of time and it's sold, can somebody still access it to either, you know, mold the mold the grass or or access it that way? Is there still access in that sense, in your mind? Like is that is that is that is that still a reason to have an access for that purpose to maintain the property until it is developed? Because um, because if it just grows up wild, then you still want, you know, the ability for somebody to go in. There is, I don't know if it's official. Uh, there's a, a visually a field entrance does exist right. off side road 20 B 22 B at the most Southeast corner. Um, it looks like it actually is used by the person with the residential property adjacent to it, but there. There is an existing hole in the fence and obviously someone's driving in there and they right. could theoretically open up their own fence and they would technically not require a permit to drive their vehicle off the road through that hole that exists. Right. And I guess if you need access to a piece of property and you can't get access, you make application for an entrance, <laughs> you know, so that for purpose too. Okay. I don't know if there's any other comments to that. My other, my other question was just regards to the, the line. I just, um, I guess maybe more where I was coming from is the Ziggly line on that one lot eight, if that was a lot, how the heck do you survey that where you keep a straight line? And that's where I was thinking about even a straight line, your, your map is going to overlay where you have hazard land and you can still develop in hazard lands. Yeah. yeah. Minimal, minimal, you can put a fence through there or you can, you know, so I guess that's where like, like to have a, a Ziggly line, it, it, you know, who's where a straight line, like, I guess I'm thinking farmer, that farmer thinking where you just draw a straight line, right? So I don't know if you have any thought for that. Inter interestingly enough, you're thinking like a surveyor because I'm sure that my surveyor is not going to be happy <laughs> with me. Um, I sort of am thinking out loud right now that once the surveyor has the opportunity to go out and do the work that they would probably recommend maybe um, some additional lines based on being on the property. Right. Um, and I know that as long as the final plan isn't generally in conformity with what we're asking for today and maybe a little bit different to sort of make, make something happen. I know that that happened um, on another lot that I did. We had to adjust it a little bit to make it line up with an ad adjacent lot because it didn't show up on our, our consent drawing. Um, typically there's a little bit of wiggle room um, as part of that clearance of our conditions. And so I would probably leave that up to the surveyor, but I think you're right. He's probably not going to be very happy with me, but we were really generally trying to maintain uh, just severing the the, the, uh, the settlement area lands so that we didn't get comments to say we needed to do an EIS or or anything yeah. like that, so. Yeah, and, and once the survey is done, it's it's once you register the survey, then it's final, right? That's that final yeah. stage, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, great, thank you for those comments. Um, comments uh, from committee members? Uh, Member Martin, go ahead. I just had one easy one and maybe um, would help if, if the secretary treasurer could put the conceptual plan back up for a second. I just want to know which one was B25 that was previously yeah. approved. It's lot number two. Lot number two. So one yeah. and three were also applied for at that time, but those were the ones that were withdrawn. Correct. Yes. So... Where did we determine that the um, municipal train drain, sorry, went? Well, they're kind of in a couple of places on the main property. And I think that the intent was to abandon those single um, uh, severances at this point, because number two wasn't impacted by it, that the review for the entire property would take that into consideration and that those drains would become part of the overall drainage and grading plan uh, for the bigger subdivision. So it uh, allows it all to be sort of dealt with in one, um, one application as opposed to trying to 
sever off those individual lots. So where it says that that's open space, that little future development area up at the top corner, is that a, a stormwater management pond then? Is that what you're thinking there or are you going to... Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, it's basically labeled like that because it's not large enough to be a lot and we needed to align the road with the adjacent road. Uh, that would be a requirement of your transportation department just from a traffic safety perspective. It might just be a landscape or an entrance like arch or not an arch, but maybe an entrance yeah. um, sign or something to the, to the neighborhood. Again, this is just conceptual. I, you know, this um, is just conceptual. I just wondered yeah, if we yeah. were, if we had, you know, made any sort of progress or why we're looking at it differently now. Like, I just wanted to grasp what the differences were, I suppose. So it was always intended that we would sever off the um, settlement lands. Um, it's just moved forward a little bit quicker than we had anticipated. Um, those first three lots were sort of step one and step two moved along a little bit faster, but now lots one and three are part of that larger parcel. So it would be, you know, reviewed and designed once they're ready to move forward with a plan of subdivision. So it'd be very comprehensively reviewed, the whole parcel. Great. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. And certainly there's a little bit of flexibility there for whatever you plan out and design and probably have to redesign that whole street. Um, Member Clark. Yeah, just with regard to the drain, there, there's multiple drains there, I think. And I guess I just wonder, there'll have to be some drains on, on, on it, these individual lots when they're created. And I guess, or, or is it possible to bring them all together and run them down a, a uh, I guess a municipally owned drain or a, like a right of way type of thing? Or, uh, cause it, they may they may need to be uh, maintained, I guess at some point, somehow. And, and I guess mm -hmm. there, there would have to be uh, some kind of a, an agreement with the lot owners at the time in order to do that. But I guess I'm just, Wondering if, and maybe they maybe they can all be tied together. Uh, there would have to be a stormwater management plan. Yes. To, to, to deal with the, the surface water and also dealing with the other uh, surface water that goes through the drain that you pointed out a few months back, right? So. Well, yeah, I guess that, I just wondered if yeah. if it would be separate and and whatever from from all these lots or just how that would work. And I guess maybe it's to be determined. Yeah, in all likelihood, it'll be a, a comprehensive review and it'll be part of the, it might eliminate all the drains that are there and create something new to deal with all that water that comes through and across that road. So that would be up to the us to achieve as part of the uh, the submission to prove that we've captured all that water and, and put it in the right place. And so. There'd have to be an engineer report that, that deals right. with that. Member Clark? Well, I guess that would that would be the property owner's expense. Correct. Okay. No, as long as the water doesn't back up into Rockland, I guess we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most That's definitely not. <laughs> Most definitely not. Um, thank you. Thank you. And you know, and thank you for pointing that out because uh, certainly you pointed it out and, and made everybody aware of that. So then it's not a problem down the road or somebody digging a house through uh, a drain and that sort of thing. Um, other questions, Member Clark again? Well, I guess there is an existing lot there now that has a, it's vacant and it was for sale and and, the, and, the, and maybe this isn't the place to bring it up but the, the, the drain goes across the lot and, and there was some issue with, with selling it and, and providing, uh, I guess, uh, clarity on, on, on where they could build or if they could build and, and maybe a new owner wouldn't want it there, I guess I, I'm not sure, as I say, I'm not sure this is the right spot to be put, bringing that up, but I'm just curious. No, do you have any comments to that, Kristen? Is that the lot that was created through the other consent? No, that, no, 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 it was uh, it it was created a long time ago. Oh, an existing, okay, and yeah. It, I, I'm it was on side road 22 and it's, yeah. it, the, the drain comes across the road right there and, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure anybody was aware of it at the time, even when the lot was created, I don't just recall. 
So anyway, it, it may have no bearing on this, but it, I guess the, the drain does come across the road and goes through that individual lot. Mm -hmm. so if, it's putting water on this, yeah, if it's putting water on this property, then we'll have to, to yeah. deal with it as that part of that future application. Yeah, okay. And Thank that's you. west, Dave, that's west of this, this section number four. It's west of that, right, from the map? It, it's next to, it's, there's a, there was a, a garage there and, and then a vacant lot and then there's two houses and then the rest of this property. So it's the, the lot in the middle. I have a drain so map if the, the committee would like to see. Sure, I was just gonna ask you if you can throw that up. Are you seeing yellow on a map, yellow lines? Yep. So this is, I just traced this over the imagery. Uh, you can kind of see if I got rid of these lines, there's uh, the water moisture difference and you can pick it up in the grass and that in combination with the engineering maps, I remember where the drain is now. So this is the one yes. Member Clark is speaking to, uh, which actually came up for sale kind of around the time we were doing these original con mm -hmm. initial exactly. consents. And that's how we ended up knowing to tell anyone anything was because Member Clark uh, told us that the drain was there. So mm -hmm. this anyway, is where it is. I guess, is there anything going to happen to that chunk of drain that's on that individual lot? It's a good question. So through a plan of subdivision, like the road will end up uh, from Kristen's plan there, it'll it'll go probably something like this to match up with those other two. That would be kind of a logical layout. Uh, there could be other options, but I, given that the lots generally have to be an acre in area when you're on septics because of this nitrate study that has to be done. In those scenarios too, uh, stormwater management, a lot of times lot level controls, they don't make a pond just because there's not that much impervious surface. So you just grade it properly into a ditch, um, which would be along your road. And in this scenario, uh, you could, you, I'd imagine a lot of this would get ripped out. This might be readjusted to kind of shoot on a straighter line out of the ditch over to here. But this all depends on the, the lay of the land too, right? And this through here, it might not be possible to route this through a ditch to get to here and maybe it stays and there's an easement that trickles over here or something like that, but that would all get redone before anything gets to get built and then be paid for and addressed through the, the plan of subdivision by whoever's subdividing everything. So this severance, uh, um, according to your map, goes up behind those three, two, three other lots. Uh, yes, right? <laughs> Nope. Yeah, it's going to be like and then this. That, and then I, I see it now that follows the edge of those trees, your hazard lands. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. So, so, okay. That, cause I was going to, that was going to address my, or uh, my question was all those that drainage, uh, old drainage is all in the severance basically. Pretty much other than the one that these ones that are yeah. kind of already there. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's that was showing those buildings in there as well, but right? That building that the barn's going. Yes. Uh, there's yeah. a kind of a well next to the barn, which is why the lot yeah. does what it does. And then the laneway is sticking with the existing kind of buildings. Right. Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Matt. Any uh, other questions uh, to the uh, to the applicant agent? From committee members, does it say? Did it say Rennie uh, or uh, Miss Rennie? Did it say Clark Street on there? Just kidding. Just. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I'll move on. I, I thought the fine print it said Clark Street on there. I wasn't sure. All right. At this time, the committee. Um, Sorry. Any person wishing to object or support or general questions on the proposed consent, please indicate and state your name and address. Is there anybody that uh, wishes to ask questions or have general comments or uh, about this from the general public? We do have um, two people in attendance that have registered for this file. So if you'd like to speak, if you could raise your hand. Okay. Okay. 
Not seeing any hands yet. Could be like the last one, maybe just following along. Those two are are the applicants, Aldo and Jean. Right. Yep, okay. I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, so there, uh, is nobody wishing to speak. So then, any further discussion on the proposed application from committee members? Any further items to be uh, to be raised? Can you please read reread for the for the record the uh, conditions uh, for this application? Either uh, Planner Rapney or Secretary Treasurer. I can do it, Chair. I have them right here. Um, so payment of sure. municipal taxes, if outstanding. Payment of the $300 approval fee, if outstanding. Payment of the $500 parkland dedication fee. The applicant to obtain a zoning bylaw amendment to implement the consent. And an entrance permit to be obtained for the severed lot from the Municipality of Grey Highlands Transportation Department. So are we, that last one, are we going to require that? Um, you, in your opinion, Matt, do we need that? Uh, sorry, Member Allen, you raised, you raised your hand first. I'll go to you first and then I'll go to Matt. I was just going to ask if you'd like a motion that we um, remove the um, requirement for an entrance permit. And if that's what the planners um, are suggesting, then I would make that motion. Yeah, that's gonna keep it clean. And then it, it, it's a motion to remove it from one of the conditions from the planning report. Why don't we word it that way? So was there a seconder for that then? Member Martin. So um, Madam Secretary Treasurer, can you just, you captured the motion that's uh, at play here? I did. Okay. Yep. Any discussion on removing that one from the uh, proposed, uh, from the planning report in regards to proposed uh, recommendations for conditions? Okay, seeing that, all in favor of changing that? Okay, that's that's carried. So then that will that will remain, uh, rem remove that one. So that'll leave the remaining three conditions to that. Any further discussion on this application for consent? <clears throat> all right. Uh, so then, moving on to consent, you have three options: to approve, deny, or defer for reasons of, of your deferral. <clears throat> so moving on to uh, this application, uh, Member Martin. I will approve the application with the conditions as read. Okay. Member Clark. Yes, I support the application uh, with the conditions as <laughs> read. Member Allen. I also support the um, consent with the conditions as um, read. Okay. Member Allwood. I support the application for consent with the conditions as read. Okay, thank you. And as myself, Member McQueen, I also support the application to the, the conditions that have been read out, uh, subject to a 20 day appeal period once the, uh, the uh, decision has been mailed out. If there are no appeals during that time, you may proceed with the, uh, the application as it's uh, set out so that it, this application has been carried, the consent has been carried. Thank you, committee. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Thank you very much for all your uh, questions or, or answers to the questions. All right. So then moving on to our agenda. Uh, other business. Um, I presume that the conference in Blue Mountains is still on. I don't think, I don't know, is, is anybody, or has anybody heard or saw, seen anything with regards to any changes to that? It was booked for in June. Okay, we just have to uh, keep our eye on that. Member Martin? Um, it wasn't about the conference, but I just wanted to take a minute and just thank our past Secretary Treasurer of the Committee of yes. Adjustments for all of her hard work. Just acknowledge her and wish her well in her new endeavors. Yes, and, and uh, yes, Cassandra Dillman has, uh, has, has moved on to... Uh, uh, a future uh, employment in the town of Collingwood and, and furthering her, uh, her career. And uh, she, as I understand, I, I think she sent me an email there and she's been with us for I think, close to five years. So um, she's done a great service to us. And uh, I certainly uh, uh, responded to her email and wished her the best uh, with her uh, new, uh, new endeavors. So thank you for raising that again, Member Martin. 
Um, I did going back, I did get myself, uh, uh, signed in and I paid for my membership this year as every, as any, everybody else, uh, got signed in for their membership. Remember I've had mine paid for three months now, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I know I just did mine a few weeks back. So. Remember Elwood? I know you're keen, yeah. you're keen. So, uh, yeah, I did pay for, um, my membership for, uh, this year. And, uh, I was just wondering. I'm not sure if the registration is open yet for the conference, but at some point, I guess we'll get notified and uh, we'll have to register if we plan on yes. attending. Yeah. When, when's the deadline there, Mr. Chair? Well, I guess you can't register for the conference until you, until you do sign up, but uh, well, if you remember your last year's password, it's pretty simple. You want to get in and then you just use a credit card to, and then, and then, and then submit your, um, submit your, um, your expense with your timesheet and, and then yep. you'll be reimbursed on, on that. And, uh, and like uh, member always said, as we get closer to the conference, uh, I know we did allow uh, funds in there for everyone to attend the conference. And so, uh, and it being in Blue Mountain, if everything moves forward, it's, it's pretty handy and pretty close to, um, and uh, to attend. And, and, that, and I will say, I've done a little bit of research and following up um, from our, our last meeting. And there seems to be, there has been some changes uh, made. And I know, uh, Planner Rapke, you had mentioned that. And I saw, I think it on link, LinkedIn, I saw something where there were, what's his name? The lawyer. Um, Sydney Troyster. Jason yes. yes. And I think there, is there a webinar or something? Or he's, maybe he's put, put out the changes in a, in a bit of a paper or something. I can't remember, but there was something there that uh, he sent out. And I'm thinking, um, should be that should that be something that maybe we get a little bit of an update at, at a future meeting or I'm presuming at the conference if everybody is able to attend we will definitely get an update um, at that conference of, of that Matt I was actually going to ask uh, the committee if if that's something you would want a little rundown on perhaps even next meeting as Sydney did prepare uh, a really good overview of the changes to the act that can yeah. be appended to it and then I can summarize it one of the biggest ones for this group is the power to now cancel consents by issuing a consent cancellation certificate that power is live with this committee it automatically you have that power as, as long as you have the delegated authority for consents it just automatically gave it to you um, we don't have a fee for that and the fees and charges bylaw the plan is to accept them because legally we can issue them it's hard to kind of refuse something because we don't have a fee yet. And the approach we were going to do is not make anyone pay anything until you, uh, you know, approve one. And then with a condition that it, uh, they, they pay the stamping fee that's normally done for a consent. There's not really any analysis that goes into them and I'll turn it for the most part, they will be done with lot line adjustments anyway. So they'll be accompanied by a consent application because people don't generally apply to merge stuff outside of that scenario. There's there's a couple other scenarios where they might be standalone, but I, I can provide kind of an overview of that. There's some in the works right now that'll probably potentially be two committees from now uh, in, in front of the committee for decision. So I was wondering um, if it was in a meeting would it be better that if we um, moved our meeting up an hour or whatever and do it before our meeting? So we sort of versus during the meeting or, or we did it after our um, applications. Uh, I guess I, I'm sort of reaching out to the committee to what you uh, um, prefer. I, obviously, if we had a meeting where we had six files, that may be something that you may want to push off to another meeting if that was the case or however. But um, what's, your, what's your thoughts on all that? <clears throat> Anybody? How long, how long, Dick, like, how long do you think, like, would you need Matt? Um, I think at, as far as the committee is concerned and what you need to do, there's not that for the lawyers, it's actually quite complicated. Uh, that happens after us and is kind of a them issue. I, I think really 15, 20 minutes, I can probably hit all the highlights. It's, order of events because it, it'll end up being a consent cancellation registration okay. of that certificate will end up being a condition for the associated consent and things like that so just running you guys through that shouldn't take more than 15 minutes 
So I would say set aside a half an hour in case there's questions just to make sure. And if you don't need it, then you don't need it. And are you able to send something out beforehand so we can do a little bit of read up, read them, or I guess that. that I that can is. send you something right off, right when we're done this meeting, what Sydney sent okay. along, at least for a starting point. Yep. Okay. So why don't you leave it for then for you to schedule in, in an upcoming meeting? And is that okay with the committee members? Does that sound fair? Okay. Then we'll leave it with you guys. And, uh, Member Allward. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm assuming that uh, when it does get on, it'll be on the agenda of whatever meeting it is. And uh, so you know, members of the public will have a chance to look at it too, but uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah. thank you. And and these are recorded. So if, if there's something that you refer back or you want to watch it or whatever, or somebody else, they could be referred to that that particular meeting where it was uh, discussed and, and talked about. and. It's there for others to follow and uh, get educated at a later time. So, all right, that sounds good. Any other uh, other business then? Um, okay, and again, uh, thanks uh, Jerry Lynn for uh, taking care of tonight and uh, as being our secretary treasurer. And uh, you reminded me at the beginning that you had done this before, so it just like clockwork. All right, so I need to. Uh, it does show that there are three files uh, for March 8th at this time uh, scheduled. So seeing there's no other business, can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Councilor Allwood, second by, uh, sorry, Member Allwood, second by Member Clark, that we adjourn at 617. All in favor? Okay, that's good. Well, good night, everyone, and, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, we'll see you as a group next next month.